All right, Luke Thomas with Morning Combat, joined by the man who put on quite a performance in Long Island, if I do say so myself. You might know him as Danger. He's the number rank, eight ranked flyweight in the world. It's Matt Schnell. Hi, Matt. How are you? Doing great, Luke. Uh, thanks for having me. Good to be here. Yeah, man. I'm trying to remember the last time I spoke to you in an interview, I think it was on my old show. It was my radio show. It was about, a, I think it was about three years ago, something like that. You're constantly on the move in all these different places. So let's, let's, we have a lot of catching up to do. So let's start first. I see that you got that shiner on your eye. We were talking about it before the interview went live. Why don't you tell the folks what happened there? Yeah. So <laughs> after the fight, if you, if you look, I'm not, I mean, I, I was in a fight. You could tell that I was in a fight, <clears throat> but I didn't have a big black eye. I gave myself this black eye afterwards when I got in the shower. Uh, I, I went to blow a snot rocket and I blew my eye up because he did. He crunched my nose. The, the first cross he hit me with in the, in the very first round, he crunched my nose mm. and uh, yeah, did some damage. All right. Well, how, first of all, how long did it take for that swelling to go down? I mean, <clears throat> the next day on the airplane, it swelled completely shut. So, oh my God. Uh, and it was probably two, three days before, before it started calming down. And obviously now it's just kind of a little shiny. Yeah. Dude, Again, what is it like going through TSA looking like that? You know, honestly, people really don't give me much guff. I've, I've been, you know, nobody really, people probably looked at me funny, but yeah. I wasn't paying attention. So when, when I came from Singapore, I, I fought uh, in a way and that kid chipped me up all night with jabs so bad that I had corneal abrasions on both eyes. So I had to have eye patches on both of my eyes walking through the airport in singapore so i got funny looks that time Jeez, louise all right well let's let's talk about the fight i mean truly i think one of the great comebacks i've, I've ever seen i've been watching this sport a long time have you gone back and actually watched it and if so when you look at it what do you see how, how do you feel about it yeah i wish it would have gone better <laughs> <laughs> no, um it was it was tough we we knew that in a way was i'm sorry we, we knew that Sue was, was tough. He was slick. We knew that, uh, like, obviously he hit pretty hard, but that kid could crack. He was really bringing them to me. And after he buzzed me with that first one, I mean, I was really buzzed. I feel like he turned my head completely in the opposite direction with a cross. And uh, I, was, I, was, I really felt like I was shaking that off the whole time. Like, if mm. DC would have asked me how it went, I was like, yeah, he hit me with that cross and, and everything – in between there, uh, I, I really couldn't recall. Now that I've watched it back so many times, I can, I can kind of piece it together. But uh, tough fight. Tough fight indeed. What kind of response did you get from folks? I, I, I was th saying this. The reason why I asked is because you know, you've been in the UFC for a while. You made your debut with them in 2016. Um, and I felt like this was a real breakout moment for you. What kind of response have you gotten since the fight? Yeah, it's definitely been a breakout moment and uh, great. You know, everybody's been so great. It's been awesome. I went and commentated some fights in Marksville, Louisiana, and, and people were just so kind and showed so much love. And it's, it's good. It feels good. It feels good. And I, I have been at this for a long time. Always feels good to, to have a little validation. In fact, in this sport, it's hard to come by validation. You never really feel that way. So uh, I can't say that I, I'm satisfied. I'm happy. I feel like things... Uh, feel like I'm getting getting recognition that I probably deserve and uh more to come baby we're gonna get back out there we're gonna keep scrapping I feel good let's go all right your coach safe Saud. I'm desperate to know because he keeps it real I mean he, he does a lot of things but he keeps it real what did he say to you when that was over back in the locker room oh uh, coach safe was so proud of me you know that's one of the reasons that I I've worked with coach safe is more than anybody that I've ever experienced and been around that man wants me to win. He's always liked me, always had respect for me. And I, I, I show up and I work hard, you know, I put in, I put in the time in his room and I think he, that has only further made him want me to win. So he was, he was happy for me, but yeah, he was sweating bullets. <laughs> he was, <laughs> listen, you have something you've never heard coach safe say in somebody's corner. I guarantee it. Go and look at any time he's ever cornered before. Pull guard. He was screaming to me, pull guard. You, Coach Safe would never say something like that. That's how bad I was hurt. That's how much trouble I was in. So, uh, yeah, he was proud of me. 
What was the game plan? I guess was the game plan kind of what we saw in the first round, where it's a little bit more takedowns, top control, that sort of thing. Like, what yeah. were you? What were you when you guys had sized up Sumadarji? What had you planned to do? We knew that I would have the advantage in the grappling department, <clears throat> even though he trains at American Top Team, even though he's on the match with great guys, former training partners of mine, you know, guys cornering against me who have who, who have cornered me and, and uh, been been in my room before. So that's always an interesting thing. Got, got a lot of respect for those guys. We knew that he would be improved, but we knew that I would have <clears throat> I would have the advantage on the mat. So. Uh, but, you know, I struck well with him in the first round, too. And, I mean, I ultimately hit him with a cross that kind of was the end of it. And, yeah, he, 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 had, a, he had a great performance. But uh, the first round, that was the game plan. And if it would have went the way that I intended it to go, we probably would have just done that for three rounds. Of course, we wouldn't have gotten a bonus. I wouldn't be having this interview with you right now. But uh, the, uh, I can do that to anybody. I'm, I'm a guy. You know, it's funny. I, I when you think about it, the fight was crazy, and and it turned out to be this sort of really magical moment. But it was perilous, right? I mean, you got buzzed several times, and it, there was a whole, you know, it was a whole thing. Are you glad the fight turned out the way that it did? Are you are you happy? I mean, obviously, if I asked you rationally, would you like to go in there and KO him in thirty seconds? Of course, the answer is going to be yes. But given that it played out the way that it did, are you grateful for that? I'm always grateful for the opportunity, you know, and. Why not? Why not have an epic performance on the biggest spot you've ever been in? You know, I've, I've been put in decent spots before. I've got to fight on the pay-per-views and I've, I've gotten to fight on free TV. You know, I kind of like I like the free TV thing. I, I feel like I'm a free TV fighter uh, for now. So uh, maybe, maybe a couple more wins will work our way back up. But I like being put in those big spots, those big moments, big cards, ABC, uh, Long Island, New York. Why not? Why not? What, why free? Why free TV more than pay-per-view? I don't know. They, they just feel like they're, to me, they feel like they're a little bigger. They, they pop more. They've, I've always gotten better interaction. Uh, and I think sometimes on the pay-per-view, there's more expectation. And sometimes you come up short. And, you know, I got a lot of hate for my performance against, against Rogerio Bontra. And when I felt like I was the only one out there trying to fight in that one. And, yeah, I, I, I lost, but I tried my best. So, yeah, I don't know. Free TV has always worked out best for me. I get a good pop in the crowd. I, I also think let's let's keep fighting in New York I'm, or, or up, up in the Northeast. That works for me, too. You know, I, when I spoke to you last time, I've interviewed you a couple times prior to this. One time you were with ATT, and then the time after that you had moved on to Texas. When you had moved to Texas from ATT, did you immediately go to Fortis, or were, were you at somewhere else before that? I kind of bounced around. And I was living in Texas, but I was still going to CSA, and I was going up north and, and preparing uh, with – AKA and CSA and some of the guys from alpha male would come and meet us at CSA, like Josh Emmett and, and uh, Andre Feely and a couple, couple, couple other guys. We, we would cross train with a good little group there in Northern California. So that's what I was doing for a while. But then uh, after the pandemic, we made the switch to just stay in Texas. I had my little girl, I've got uh, a little boy on the way. And mm, congratulations. Uh, yeah, thank you. I'm a family man, so I, I'm, I'm trying to stay a little closer to home. But we got resources here, you know, like on a Houston's kind of a, mm -hmm. a little stout place in and of itself. Uh, I've been getting work with with uh, great guys. Uh, we, we get together with Eve Edwards. Uh, Adrian Yanez has been coming over there. Uh, Ruffian Stotts has been coming over there. Myself, we, we've, we're and, and we're going to, you know, as we continue to train together, we're all we're also going to attract more guys to this area. So we got a good little thing going on around here, Texas, cooking how, some, some special stuff up. How, how did you know? Like, um, or I should say, when did you know that like Coach Safe was going to be a good match for you? Like, when was when did that marriage, so to speak, happen? You know, if I'm being perfectly honest, it took a little while for me to to kind of warm up to the idea. I, I was facing off against Coach Safe as an amateur, and uh, and my first pro loss was to one of his guys. So, uh, But he had always shown me love and shown me respect, and I got in the UFC, and I got on some wins, and we would, we would be in the same place, and he'd always be like, no, you, you got to come through. You got to train with me. And then <clears throat> it all worked out with the pandemic. I was, I was kind of – I wanted to stay close to home, but I wanted to get some good work, so I started cross-training with those guys. And yeah, it's it's been great. Coach Safe is is a great mind. He's uh, he's been good for me. Uh, he helps me out in many many different ways. And yeah, I'm grateful for him. 
Yeah, but give me an example. Like, what is it about your relationship with him that makes it all work? I think it works uh, mainly in part because I, I think we all need somebody, somebody to uh, kind of subordinate to, you know. And Coach Safe, I do, I do think he genuinely has the. He looks out for, uh, look, uh, does his best to look out for me and my best interest. <clears throat> and like I said, he really wants me, really wants me to win, and that's that's big for me too. Uh, and he's, he's certainly more of a tactical mind than a technical mind. I do most of my technical work with my guys here with Eve Edwards and, and uh, Alex Chang and my group of little killers that, that I, that I bounce around with here. But uh, when I go over there, he, he holds me accountable. And, you know, even in the room puts a lot of pressure on me, puts me in that, puts me in that zone a lot, makes me feel what it's like to be in bad positions and in, under pressure and you know he demands excellence from me and i rise to the occasion that's an interesting thing to say to that we all kind of need someone to subordinate to what help me help me, help me understand what's the logic there i'm not in any way challenging it i'm, I'm more curious what, what is the insight there you know i i genuinely feel like i've long been the captain of the ship in in my career and i take pride in that uh and and not to not to say like you certainly don't need somebody to, to look to that you count on for everything. But I do think it's good to lean on, especially, especially in fighting in this sport, it's, it can be extremely isolating. So I, I think it is good to kind of, you know, uh, surrender to, to somebody else's judgment every once in a while. Hmm. Fair enough. Now, uh, curiously, I wonder how you feel about this. Like, as we mentioned, you've been with UFC since 2016. It's funny, like if you followed, if I, if someone was around when I was around following your career from the MTV days, it feels like a completely different universe now relative to those days. And I'm sure you probably feel that in even more so. So let me ask you this way. Where do you feel like you are? You're ranked eight in the UFC coming off arguably the, certainly the most exciting, one of the better ones of your career. Where are you in your career? How do you see your place today? This is, we're in, we're in the thick of it. I've, I think I've long been a big part of this division and, and uh, somebody, a dark horse, if you will. And I think uh, I'm 32 years old. I'm putting together a good routine out here in Texas and I'm getting comfortable. And uh, while, while simultaneously pushing, pushing the limits and being uncomfortable, uh, moving around just enough to, to get different looks, but still keeping some form of continuity. And I think, uh, I think I'm in the thick of my career. I think this is, you know, this is in the front end of my career. We're definitely in the back half of things. I'm 32 years old, but I got another good, at least three to four very competitive years in me. I'm going to try and stay active. We'll see where this goes. I think I can beat all these guys. Yeah, that's interesting. I, but do you feel that too, that like there was some intrigue when you were fighting in the, you know, the LF, well, it was LFC at the time or legacy or whatever it was that there was a little bit of like, oh, that's the guy from the MTV show. Like you're in a completely, totally different space now. I feel like in many ways, there's been a lot of new UFC fans in the ESPN era. This might be your best introduction to some of these newer fans. What happened with Sumadarji, no? I think so. I think so. And it's cool that, you know, all these people can come, come back and then go look at that, you know, look at all that stuff. It's out there. So um, <clears throat> I've, long, I've long been somewhat in the spotlight, I suppose. And that's been, it's not been easy. You know, I think I think I put a target on my back, especially early on, and I had to overcome that and uh, brought the best out of me ultimately. And I'm I'm very thankful. But yeah, you're absolutely right. We're in a different universe. I, this isn't uh, the same MTV cage no more. Yeah, no, it certainly isn't. By the way, how old is your? You have one kid, one on the way, but one kid now. Yeah. How old is she? She's two. She two. turned two in February. Bro, you're not sleeping for shit, are you? Dude, no, we sleep good. <laughs> no. Oh my god. Sleeps. Yeah, we're so lucky. My little girl sleeps. Uh, my wife is she. She's a NICU nurse. Uh, now she doesn't. She doesn't work bedside anymore. She she works like an administrative position. Yeah. Uh, very successful lady. Does well, but she knows how to. You know, she put our daughter on a schedule from day one. And I mean, it took three four months. No no no, three month old sleeps through the night. But I think by month four and five, she started sleeping like six hour stints. And ever That's since we put her, we put her down seven thirty eight o'clock she wakes up at seven a.m. the next day, and she sleeps. 
bro, I got to tell you, that's not a common experience. Yeah. Like you got it good. Oh my, I think I've aged. I have a three-year-old. I think I've aged 30 years in the last three. My Lord, man, I'm, I'm jealous. It's funny. I actually spoke to Uriah Faber about this because his daughter was born like a month before mine. And he was also like, yeah, she just sleeps through the night. I'm like, I don't know what is it about you fighters, but y'all have kids that are quite accommodating. Let me tell you. Yeah, well, we put her on the other side of the dang house, too. So I, I guess we just trained her early on. And, you know, praise the Lord, she's still here. She's healthy. She's happy. She's wonderful. She's a monster. But yeah, did it did it did fatherhood change you at all yet? Have you have you I mean, obviously it does in ways that you might account for in ways you might not even account for. I'm talking about the ways in which you can fully recognize. Has it changed you? I think it's been good for me. I, I really do. It, uh, I probably go to bed. At, at a better time nowadays I, I know i have you know more responsibility is a good thing as as i have another and but i like to be a part of it too I, I wake penelope up every morning and get her to school and you know do her hair my wife hates how i do her hair i'm getting better though you know it's taking some <laughs> time but uh you know i i enjoy that aspect I'm, I'm grateful for it again grateful to the ufc grateful to to fighting and i've uh you know i've paved this I paved the way for myself uh blood sweat and tears I did it the hard way I didn't I didn't take any shortcuts but here we are I get to enjoy my life I get to be a part of my daughter's life and uh fighting the UFC what a, what a dream come true how about that all right last question about the Sumodarji fight what did your wife say about it because it's one thing for media to be like yes that was amazing and for the fans or even your coach I would imagine your wife had a slightly different perspective yeah <clears throat> my wife's bright though she knew that it was big she knew that it was a big moment. She was, and I got to see her right out of the cage. She came, she came down. So I got to, I got to see her and, and touch her and hold her hand. And yeah, she knew it was big. Of course, she doesn't want to see me take a whipping. And uh, <laughs> she, she's like, yeah, let's, let's just do what we did in the first round or just finish them in the first round. You know? And we were close too. We were close. I, Sue shook, shook one off when we went to the Uma Plata. I, I was so close to snapping on the triangle. You know, I, mm. I had it. I had it, uh, I had it in the reverse spot, but I've got a tricky way to switch it. And again, he was, he was slick and he, I mean, he was slippery and he was kind of wiry strong. So he shook it off, but we almost got him in first. So you, you have an omoplata to triangle transition. Yeah. They're just, they're just interchangeable, right? Yeah. They go, yeah, they yeah, go back for sure. and forth into each other. You just and don't honestly, see if we would have, if we would have landed differently from, he be freaking sidewalk slam me Kevin Nash style. And uh, if we would have landed a little differently, I probably would have ended up triangling in there. Interesting. Yeah, no, no. I, you see them in grappling a, a fair degree, but it, you don't see a whole lot of that in MMA. It's just a little harder to pull off. It feels like that's all. Um, okay. Let's talk about something else. That's kind of interesting here. You have a, you, again, you are currently, I'm looking at the rankings as it stands today, which is July 25th. You are sitting at number eight, but there is a, interim title fight for what it's worth between Brandon Moreno and Kai Car of France in this division, the flyweight division, of course, just sort of matter of factly, how do you perceive this fight? Who do you think has the edge? Size it up for me. I think it's really, really close. Uh, Kai's been on a tear. Brandon has as well though. And for my money, he's still the champ anyways. I thought he, I thought he did enough to win the fight. Of course I'm biased because mm -hmm. I like Brandon Moreno quite a bit. Uh, but I think it's very close. Razor thin, but I just can't get the first fight out of my head. Now, Kai did come close. Kai can crack, right? He, he brings it with that right hand. And I think, I think as Kai's gone on, he doesn't, like, lose that power as the fight wears on. Whereas when they fought earlier, maybe he did. I think he's, like, better conditioned now. He looks great, you know. He, he's, he's, been, uh, he's been hot. But I still can't get the second and third round out of my head in over a five-round fight. I think we'll see more of what we saw in the second and third round. And Brandon uh, Moreno's tough, puts a lot of pressure on you, uh, durable. It's a tough fight. I think I still think Brandon Moreno gets it done. It, it's going to be close, though. It's going to be close. It, it, given your position sitting at eighth and they're sitting at one and two, and again, we'll see what happens with Devison Figueredo whenever they figure that out. But how, realistically, how far do you think you are from these kinds of fights? Uh, two to three. Two to three fights, right? Get it going Sounds in the next right, one. Yeah. Get it going in the next one. Get up, get on a streak. Maybe top five after that. Then I'll have a claim. And uh, if something shakes loose, I might just skate in there after another two good performances. But definitely three. 
fight the number one contender, become the number one contender. It's interesting. This is a division the UFC almost killed. Um, and then they kind of, they didn't kill it, but they did bleed it. And it has since become something a little bit different, maybe even a little bit better, I would argue, certainly a little bit more um, fuller in certain ways, right? How do you view the state of the flyweight division since, what do you want to call it, the UFC bloodletting at that one moment in time when Demetrius left and everything? I called it the purge, flyweight purge. Hmm. I, thought that was, I thought that was appropriate. Uh, yeah, I, dominant champions kill divisions. I think about it. Look at what Anderson Silva did to the middleweight division. I've had people argue this with me, but uh, DJ was dominant. He really was. And uh, it kind of it kind of killed the division and, and kept it thin. And, and not thin, but stout. So there's only like 18 guys in the division at one time, but they can all beat each other. How do you get on a streak when it's like that? I think Mick Maynard's done a good job of adding talent. Uh, the the contender series has typically added a couple flyweights every one, every every season. Uh, and it's, it's balanced out a little bit. I don't know how many guys are in the division right now. I don't know and count it up, but it seems like more and thus we're more capable of getting on streaks. They're, they're putting us in bigger spots on the card. I mean, thank goodness. Like they put me on ABC. What the heck? Uh, I appreciate that. Very cool. Uh, I think some guys can scrap. I think there are uh, fun fights out there and anybody I square up with, it's going to be fun every time. Come on. Yeah, no doubt about that. I, I would say also one thing that sort of speaks, this is not just in the flyweight division, but other divisions as well. One of the ways you know it's doing better or certainly even doing well is look how internationalized it's become. You just fought Sumadarji. You got Manel Kopp sitting at 13, Tagir Ulan Bekov at 15. You've got, well, he was always around before, Pantoja at four, Askarov at three. They're pulling from all different parts of the world. That's like one of the very best signs that a division is healthy. It's when it's internationalized in that way, no? Yeah, I didn't know that. It makes sense to me. And yeah, these guys are good too. You know, like used to, it's like, I'm fighting a guy from China. All good. You know, no worries. Or I'm fighting a guy from Mexico. No worries. But I mean, it's, it's changed quickly. It's changed quickly. It really has. You, do you have any issues making 125? Like, are you going to see out the rest of your career at 125? Well, the only reason I ask is because athletes get older. Sometimes that changes a little bit. I do have issue getting there, but I get there. And I'm doing it as healthy as anybody is. Uh, I, I eat reasonable. I haven't been eating healthy recently. <laughs> but <laughs> for the most part, I, I do pretty well. We cook here at home and uh, keep it moving. And if, if I do cheat, I have like pho. That's like, that's like my favorite thing in the whole wide world. But um, I mean, I, I walk around 145 pounds. So it's, it's hard. But I, I just don't think I'm a 35. If I had been fighting at 35, you know, if they would have gotten rid of the division, I, I still think that I'd be in the UFC and I'd be competitive. Uh, I'd just be fighting at 35. And by this point, I would have grown into that division a little bit. But, yeah, I, I do believe we'll see out my career as a flyweight. It's, it's going to be hard. I'm going to have to start investing more into making weight because it is more difficult. And this last one was as tough as they've ever been. But we got there. The one before this, though, was easy. And I don't know why. It's mm. like – just it just was easy sometimes that happens and then you hope it's like that again and it's just not mm. and uh so this last one was pretty tough but we got there yeah and what's all i've got to do is my job and i'll make weight what is a uh well i guess you said pho which is the vietnamese sort of like noodle soup but like do you have any what did you eat after the fight what like what did you what did you ronda rousey famously always ate like uh hot wings what did, what did you eat we got shake shack delivered oh. to the hotel me and my yeah that, that ain't bad that ain't bad it was nice it was nice yep. okay you had mentioned something in the beginning of this interview that caught my attention i definitely want to circle back to it now which is that validation in mma is hard to come by do you just mean that like fighting is so difficult that it's hard to get big wins to stand out like what do you mean by that exactly yeah it's definitely hard to get big wins but you know people have and Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm just not the most positive guy, but people take it away from you no matter what, no matter what, how big you win, no matter who you get. Sometimes people still find a way. Well, he was this. Well, it was that. And it, it just to me and, and typically winning a fight isn't a validated feeling. It's not. It's like you're you're relieved in some capacity, but it's there's not like, yes, I knew it. It's it's typically like, ah, good, cool. That was sweet. The next one's going to be in about three, four months. Let's let's get healthy. 
you know, so I, and maybe that's just me, but uh, that's how I've always felt. Uh, it's mm. validation's hard to come by in this sport. And maybe it's because I'm hard on myself. <clears throat> and I think that that's definitely a factor, but uh, I'm hard on myself. And that's why I've gotten to where I've gotten to. So it's a double edged sword. So where do you derive validation personally? <sighs> yeah, that, that's a pretty deep question there, Luke. Uh, feels like when I win fights, I feel, I do feel a little more validated. Uh, especially ones like this on such a big stage. Um, but but I, I would say that I feel the same type of validation or even more, you know, coaching to me is something that like, mm. I, I enjoy it so much. It's, it's the most rewarding thing I've ever done is watching kids walk into my gym who, who like could barely look me in the eye. And, you know, a year later, they're two and, you know, two and one as an amateur with two finishes and they got a girlfriend. It's like, this is incredible. You know, that, that, those are, those are things to me that are, that are super rewarding and you can count on that far more than you can count on your, your own fights. Of course, there's, their own, there's the own, your own stresses going into cornering people. Like I feel a lot of nerves for, you know, guys that I corner probably more so because my nerves shake when I get to the venue, I can like, I can like lock in. But uh, when, when my guys are fighting, I'm, I'm, you know, got my nuts in my chest all night long so uh we are a little bit short on time but i'd be remiss if i didn't ask about this there was a video of you uh, speaking about fighter pay that had gone somewhat viral within the media i'm wondering since it went sort of viral out there what kind of response did you personally get either from your peers or fans or media like how did you interpret how people interpreted what you were saying yeah i think i i think i upset the right people and none of my peers came for me. I saw like one nasty comment from somebody who's completely irrelevant to me and the sport. But uh, other than that, none of my peers came for me. And the reason is, is because a lot of people feel the same way I do. Now, I do think we should all be careful. I, I would like to clear the air a little bit because I was 132 pounds about to make my last descent to weight, uh, starving just irritated and if go look at it again I'm, I'm a little fiery son of a gun full of venom and it's just because that's the time it was we should all be careful with throwing around percentages we should all all be careful about talking about people's worth you know I think I made a comment on the UFC losing 90 percent of that's just silliness you know and but other than that I stand by the things I said um, and I, I believe what I believe and I really haven't heard a very good argument uh, against it now uh, I could have a better understanding of how things work. Things could be cleared up, but I, I don't think I said anything too egregious. Uh, well, I would tell you, I don't really agree with much of it. However, however, I don't have time. I should have brought this up sooner. I, 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 I'll tell you this. Here's what I would like to do. I would like to set up something a little bit later. And we're not this. I am in, you know, listen, I'm a 42 year old man. I mean, I'm not interested in having an argument with anybody, mm -hmm. but uh, I would like to have a conversation subsequent to this one about it. Um, if you're ever interested and you could hear from me and I could hear from you and we could see what yeah. comes from it. But, uh, yeah. but you know what? I will say where, this. Where, I've been where are you located? Where are you located? I live in Washington, DC. I'm on the okay. East coast. Yeah. I'm a little far away. I'm a little, far, but I have family in Dallas, which is why it's so, somewhat relevant, let's, but I will dude, say let's this. Get together, let's get together sometime. You know, I would yes. love to, I would love to have a discussion about it. And, Happily. And next go. time, next time I'm in Dallas, I'm going to hit you up, man. Let's, let's sit down. Let's talk about it. Cause I think it could be a fun and productive conversation, but I, I want to, I want to tell you this, Matt, I have been covering your career for a little while. I was so delighted to see you get that win in that way. Not just the win itself, because wins and losses are hard to come by. And all you could ever hope for is that the best guy wins. But the fact that it that um, it was a breakout moment for you, I was really happy to see it. I was really happy to see it because I think it's been a long time coming for you. And I don't think it's the last one either. So congratulations on the win. I think you're a thoughtful, smart guy. And uh, I appreciate your time. And let's talk about fighter pay at another, another time. All right. Let's go. Hey, appreciate you, Luke. Uh, I, I do. Uh, I really do. You have for a long time. I've always listened. I'm an MMA fan. So I listen to you guys. I, I listen to this stuff. I hear what's said. And you have uh, even since my first UFC win. I think you said some of the degree of, you know, I think Chanel's pretty, pretty dang good. And you kind of moved on from there. But I remember that and I appreciate it. And you're dang right. I'm more than pretty dang good. I can beat all these guys. I promise. <laughs> well, I can't wait to see what your next fight is. Get healthy, get some rest. And it sounds like you're getting good sleep. So I won't wish that on you. But um, can't wait to see what happens. Appreciate your time, Matt. And I look forward to the next chapter of your career. Thanks, boss.